And here we go. All right. Well, Tony Greco is known as one of Canada's leading fitness specialists. He's the co-founder of Greco Fitness. He's an author, an entrepreneur, a kickboxing world champion, a speaker, and celebrity trainer. And he has just launched his new book, Strong Mind, Lean Body. Uh, and I'm really excited because he is the guest for episode 33 of Living Your Life with Leanne Lang, the podcast brought to you by Extension Marketing. And for more information, you can always check out extensionmarketing.com. You surprised him? I'm at 33. Well, no, it's just because like, 33 is like my football number. That was like my oh, favorite Oh, is it really? <laughs> so, <laughs> See, awesome. it's like the stars are aligned. <laughs> That's funny. Right. I'm a big, yeah, I'm a big believer in things happen for a reason. That was my football number at Glebe Collegiate High School. 33 is my number. I love 33 for football. Yeah, because I said the number 33 <laughs> and all of a sudden like you like jumped out of your chair. That's really fun. I love it. Um, it's great to have you here. Thanks we for having We have had me. years and years of working together. Uh, I think even when I was a sports anchor, I remember coming and covering the studio and kind of doing work with you that way. And then we've done a lot over the years at CTV Morning Live. I'm very, I'm very flattered. <laughs> I made it into his book. I made it into the book. Well, of course, really, like, of course, you would have made it. Yeah, in so I appreciate that. There's a nice little kind of message in, in the uh, in the forward, uh, and it is. It's a long-standing relationship. So congratulations. I'm going to start on the book, and then we'll kind of work our way backwards. Okay. Um, what was the premise like for you to kind of put thirty years, twenty years into one kind of book? big project? <laughs> yeah. I like what what for you because there's so many. I listed like five, six different things that you have done. Yeah. That you wanted to do this. Well, the main thing was, like the title says it all, strong mind, lean body. And because everything stems from the mind. So one of the things that I learned in my career was that uh, people just are lost in thought. And not only because, um, you know, they want to be, they're just kind of like in a routine. So what would happen is I would start to train people. And the first week, I'd kind of be their trainer because we'd discuss their goals and what they want to do. And then the second week, they'd kind of tell me some of the issues they had personally. So you kind of become like their psychiatrist. And then the third week, they'd be like, you know what? I'm feeling a little bit of pain here. I've had this injury here. So then you'd become their doctor. But what I really found out is that everything stemmed from the mind. It was like, you know, if you change your thoughts then you become happier at what you do. So this book is all about the experiences. And that's why it has strategy for life successes mm -hmm. because I think each and every person that reads the book, uh, there's different chapters that motivate you to persevere, to take action. You know, kind of like what you just did in, in your career. And you're that person that makes it happen. But not everybody has that in their DNA. Okay, but let's be realistic. And I've talked about this. It There was a lot of mental a mental anguish at first of kind of coming to terms th th with the decision that I wanted to make and mm -hmm. then using my the strength of having been an athlete and my visualization to start to be able to visualize positive outcomes Absolutely. visualize how I was going to do things get myself into the mindset of almost being in competition mode you know for certain things so I can see that I had to rely heavily on kind of playing games in my head <laughs> yeah. to get things done. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And, mm -hmm. and, and, it's, and it's good that you share these experiences with other people because automatically you start to uplift people. Mm -hmm. And it's just recycled energy, uh, you know, I find. Because, like, everybody uplifts everybody. And if, you, and if you can do that, things happen. But I find people still live in a negative thought because, you know – they're probably not happy with themselves or they're not happy with a thought. And most people live in fear because our mind is so programmed that, you know, you take action based on fear. Oh, what's going to happen? I got to do this. I got to do that. But really, it's like, what what is it that you really want to do? So the minute you just sit down every morning and take a big deep breath and then you exhale, it's kind of like you receive and you give. You receive and you give to the universe. So it's amazing how you get this momentum build up. You attract really good people that want to help you. And the ones that don't, well, you don't even want to listen to them. Mm -hmm. And you just keep going and just do what you want to do. So by, I know that a lot of people have read the book so far. And it's funny because, uh, you know, they range from all different kinds of people in life. And one of the questions I always ask them is, you know, did the book motivate you? Like, did it inspire you? Like, just tell me the truth. Like, you know what? And these are people that really, you know, don't focus very well. It's like, they're just very distracted. Like, you know what? It actually did. And I said, great, fantastic, because that's what I want the book to do is I want the book to kind of relate it in your head like mm -hmm. it's your life. Because a lot of the times when you read the chapters, uh, there'll be like a paragraphs where it'll be, well, this experience now can relate to your life. So 
take a time and a deep breath to figure out what you did under these circumstances. So it obviously gets you back into your mind. So it's really, it's about you. It's not about me. Right. It's, it's triggering an experience or a thought process. Are you coming at it more from uh, wanting to inspire? Is it that people are looking to lose weight? Is it people wanting to get in shape? Is it people looking to make life changes? You know, like, because you, you see all of this when, <laughs> uh, when a person walks into the studio, right? Yeah. It's like all, it's all encompassing. So does it really hit on those things or will it tell someone who's been struggling for those 20 pounds to lose, you know, how to kind of initiate that or how to be able to achieve that goal of, of, you know, getting to this level at something. Does it? Yeah, there's a little bit of everything. So uh, the nutrition component, there's a little bit there and I make it simple. Uh, We use the hand system, which you'll, you'll see in the book. So it tells people to eat five times a day, portion meals. Then there's also uh, internally, I had a Dr. Joel Vilnov Mm -hmm. who actually wrote a whole uh, section on hormone therapy, uh, just, you know, the inside of the body. But, um, one of the things that it does is it gets you to realize that when you get stressed and everybody's stressed, you know, you trigger off a hormone called cortisol. So then you have this decision to make in your mind, whether you fight or flight right? You take off or you just keep fighting that thought. And when you do that, then what happens is your body stores a lot of fat. So most of the experiences and most of the reason why, especially women, which were the majority of my clients at the beginning, um, they stored a lot of fat because they were stressed. They were eating well, they were making positive changes in their life, but they were still stressed. It's like they weren't happy. Uh, And then the minute they started to think about them and not anybody else, and it was like about me, I'm going to take care of me now. Uh, so I can take care of the world and my family and so on, then things started to change. So their hormone levels started to balance out, especially the cortisol one. And that's a big one. And that's what I found because I I had no idea about hormones. Like, what are you talking about? So working with a lot of doctors and really working on the inside of the body made me realize, I'm like, wow, you know what? Even men go through these kind of emotions on a regular basis. It's like, why? So if you could control that uh, by incorporating exercise, uh, positive self-talk, I mean, everybody, nobody's perfect, right? We all strive for consistency. Uh, but if you can control those emotions when they do happen, it's amazing. And that all, again, stems from the mind. And this is why, you know, it's you have to have a strong mind, but you have to develop that. You started to say in the beginning when I was training the women. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, we're going to trigger this to go a, a little bit back to the beginning. And then, and then I, okay, just I want like a, a quick answer here. When people talk about the celebrity status, do you consider yourself a celebrity trainer or a trainer to the stars? <laughs> or do you know. hate both of them? I don't know. I just, it's a title they give, but I mean. It's a I'm title a, that works well in People Magazine, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I think they gave me that because I've trained a few celebrity clients. Like I had the pleasure of training Carrie Underwood mm. for like almost a year when she was here with her husband, Mike. And obviously Mike got me that yeah. contact because he was my client. And, you know, she was great. A Carol Lalt, another good friend of uh, mine who's. She actually forwarded the book, and she's so sweet. And I mean, there's so many great people around. But it's so. funny how they, how you you catch on to it, right? And then the next thing you know, it's like I've I've I think I've opened it up a people or an in style or something, you know? And it's like celebrity yeah, trainer it's funny. tips, and then they put the picture of Carrie on the side, and like I always get a kick out of it, right? Because yeah. because uh, we go back a long time. So let's go back a little bit. Yeah. Um, and and I want to because you know you've got a world title to your name in in, in kickboxing. When were you always like this active athletic kid? Like was sports part of it or was it something that evolved? Well, it's something that evolved. I mean, my parents, I came, uh, people always ask me if I'm Canadian or Italian. I mean, I'm Canadian, but I'm actually born in Italy. I, okay. I came here in 1974 and, you know, poor family. And my parents had like $500 in a suitcase. And then they put me into like uh, a school that I didn't even know how to so speak how the old, language. How old were you? I was like six. Okay. So I was like, uh, okay, so well, no English, just no an English Italian kid. That's it. And was Ottawa the first city that you came to? Is this where Ottawa you was okay. the first city? And yeah. and originally my uh, my mom's my uncle was the first one to come here in Ottawa in the '60s, and they said like, you know, come on over here. Okay. There's work, and 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 I think what I tell people is that I I think the word hunger uh, and hungry, you know, instills in me because I seen that that's what my parents, you know, believe in. It's like they had to get food on the table. I mean, we ate from the land. They were poor. They used to sell. I said, how do you guys make your money? Because we live in like the mountains of Southern Italy. Like if you go there, like, where where are you? Where are you going? Because I went there about 12 years ago. And it's like, um, you know, I went up. 
yeah. and more. And then it's like, then there's like a gravel road. So you like, you kind of like. And that's where you. And that's, that's where, where I was. Yeah. Wow. I just had to do it for my own, yeah. just my own, you know, thought. Were I, you I, amazed at how far, like from this <sighs> tiny village in the mountains of Italy <laughs> on gravel roads to what, you know, how far and yeah. what they had to do to be able to kind of create this life for you guys. Yes. Yeah. I was so impressed. And yeah. you know what, to this day, I mean, I had a, a tough upbringing with my dad. I mean, he was like tough. Like we won't, that's another whole episode. Right. But, and you know, but now I understand it, you know, cause I go like, why were they like that? And it, it's just because everything was about survival. They had to get food on the table. They had to raise a family. They were poor. So, I mean, every cent meant everything to them. And it's amazing because to this day, I mean, they still live in the same house. Uh, they don't have a mortgage. I mean, they don't, they have like grade three education. Like it's not like they, you know, went to school. And uh, my mom worked at the uh, JCC for 33 years. So she, she knows really? all about, yeah. So she knows all about, you know. She knows kosher. all the Jewish she knows customs, the, everything. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's it just, it's amazing because, uh, and then my dad got a job in construction. I mean, it's the easiest thing to get. But they saved and saved and saved. And their whole belief is that family, friends, all they do is, you know, gather around the kitchen table Sunday, have the family over, keep the family together. That's all they really believe in. Like, it, honestly, they're not fancy people. If they actually won a lottery tomorrow, I don't think really anything would change. They're just, they're just not that kind of people, right? They don't go out to restaurants. But one thing they did is they saved a lot of money. They became mortgage free. They're very, very happy. And it's things like this that, you know, I admire and give me the drive. So I find that you need to be hungry. And you need to take actions and, and make things happen. So that was one of the things that, you know, when I when I uh, came to Canada and went through the school, I think that instilled in me because back then, call it now, I guess it's called bully. But I mean, there's so much. And a lot of this is in the book, by the way, where like I had 13 people beat me up. Uh, yeah, like I had my back against a car one day because I was like the new kid on the block. And it's like, I mean, why you beat me up, right? So, but I, I took the punches because my dad's like, if you come home and you know what I hear you beat somebody up, you're going to get more like this is the kind of, you know, upbringing I was brought into. Right. So, um, you know, it and then one day I, I really got the heck, you know, I, I really got kicked really bad. And um, I went home, was bruised and stuff. And like what happened? Like, look, these guys beat me up. So then I guess I earned my stripes and I, back then it was bullying. Now, yeah. I, I mean, now it's bullying. I mean, back then, I don't know what Back it then it was just schoolyard <laughs> school survival. survival. <laughs> so I think, I think that those experiences now I want to share and not necessarily to, you know, tell people, oh, poor guy went through this. No, no, no. I'm just saying that life isn't easy. Uh, you know, it's what you make out of it. Now you could have, you could quit and you could not get back up or you could not quit and get back up and keep going. Like everybody says, uh, you know, everybody has a plan until they, like Mike Tyson says, everybody has a plan to get punched in the face. Well, I mean, in 1995, when I won my gold medal, I got kicked in the face. Like I was wired, uh, you know, for a month with a, a wired jaw, but I still kept going. I tried to teach martial arts. I was drinking out of a straw. I would go into these local restaurants. I remember going into Fratelli's local restaurant here and they would show me my meal and then they would blend it in the back and I'd be sucking it out of oh, a straw. I know, it's just crazy. A Fratelli <laughs> meal, which is so good uh, through a straw. So, okay, so go back. You you get you get the crap beaten out of you. Yeah. Um, I, I take it you're small, I mean... Smaller not a big guy. You're not a big guy, smaller in <laughs> statue. I'm, I don't think you had the muscle structure that you no. do now back then. Was that what initiated you getting into martial arts or? Um, so like what happened was uh, my good friend, um, Luigi Paravan, he got me, he said, we're going to go play football. Like, guys, I don't know what football is. Like, just just come in. My brother's going to drive football us. Football would have been soccer for you. Yeah. If, football. It, if you're coming from Italy, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, they, they uh, give us all this equipment and I remember, uh, you know, getting all this stuff and it's like. Are you into high school now? Uh, like, no, right? no. This yeah. was like, I was like in mosquito football. Okay. Uh, so I was like, like eight, uh, nine? At eight, nine. Okay. Rochester Lions. That's what I was uh, playing for. So it was like, yeah, I just got to run fast. So then that, that was actually a good thing because I, I encourage people to get into sport because who knows, right? With the upbringing, maybe I would have been into some bad stuff, right? But uh, that's why I really believe in sports. And then what happened was I, I still had this anger in me that I took martial arts because I wanted to beat up people. <laughs> I know it's crazy what I tell people, but it's like I used to watch the Bruce Lee movies and yeah. you know make the nunchucks, and it's like I guess I, it was kind of like because of the tough upbringing. It's like man, I'm you gonna need release. An outlet. I need an outlet. Yeah. So um, it taught me what not to do. It actually taught me to like you know relax, 
have confidence, self-defense. Did you have a did you have a good instructor? Did you have a good um, mentor there that saw a kid coming in wanting to fight because he wanted to beat people up and kind of <laughs> and release this anger or you know this built up kind of stress of, of home life and kind of a new environment in a new country? Did he see that and kind of was able to? change your thought process as to what the martial art was really supposed to be about. Yeah. You know what? That's, it's, it's, it's amazing you asked that question because I've never been asked that, but it, he did. And I'll tell you how. Um, so we, uh, we took, I took martial arts on Bang Street with the, with the Dubris of martial you arts. You were Dubris? Yeah. Okay, okay. But back guys, then yeah. we were downstairs and it was only uh, four people in the lunch class. So I remember the instructor, uh, Peter, who was a great instructor and he, he's still teaching. Mm -hmm. So what happened was, I mean, when you have four students in class, I mean, you're going to be a good student because again, you have no choice survival again, right? So we're doing drills and I, I got up to my green belt, which is kind of halfway through and Tuesdays w was sparring class and then Thursdays was kata, which is the patterns that you, that you do in mm -hmm. martial arts. So Tuesday we'd spar and then, you know, I, I started to like get that anger because this is what I wanted to do. So accidentally, like just a kick kind of nicked them in the face. And I mean, he was just controlling it because he didn't want to turn it on. But then when he turned it on, it was great for me because like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so again, it was like all these steps that they taught me to calm down. And I really believe, and I think every uh, child should take martial arts. If it's taught really well, it's a great discipline. Like I really do owe a lot of my, uh, you know, confidence and my perseverance to martial arts. I really do because I took it for so long. I got my uh, second degree black belt, then I got my third, then I got my fourth, then I got my fifth, but I actually opened up my own location. I made a whole total uh, shift in my life that I loved it so much that I said, I want to open up my own location because this is what it does for people. It's it's a great self-esteem builder. It's a great conference builder. It's a great self-defense builder. It's fun. It's fitness. And then that's what triggered everything off. Hmm. At what point did you realize that you were able to compete at a high level? I mean, you're you're talking a six degree black belt, uh, but that you could take it and and compete on a stage, you know. So, uh, so I went to do my first tournament. I was yeah. uh, an orange belt. It lasted really, literally thirty seconds. I went in. It was like three points. It was like boom, boom, boom. Whoa! What the heck happened? And I was out. Yeah. So I kind of got discouraged because I was like, man, like I don't know if I want to keep doing this. I wasn't. I think I wasn't good enough. But it was for the sport. Then uh, once I got my black belt, I started to take it seriously. Uh, so I competed uh, on a NASCA level, which is National Association of Sports Karate uh, uh, Association. And what you have to do is you have to go to one tournament every month in the U.S. It was, it's like kind of like a tennis circuit. So you're in your uh, category, your weight, and if you lose one fight, you're done. So then what happens is if you win, then you, you, know, you, get, a, keep a, you keep going, you yeah. get a rating. And then eventually what happens is you get a buy because in some of these divisions, you're talking like 30, 25 uh, competitors. So really you don't fight to the last six fights. You get a buy because you keep doing this circuit. Um, so um, I was seated fourth in North America. I lost a few fights, but then I started, I got the momentum. I started to win. And then um, that, was, that was the high, right? And then what happened was in 1995, uh, made Team Canada in my weight category, and that was the big push. And I beat 18 opponents. It was a two-day uh, tournament. I remember uh, Alexi Yashin was at my my event because there was a lot of Russian competitors there, and I know he he loves the sport as well. And um, so it, it was it was amazing because that was the stepping stone that really believing in yourself um, is is not really enough. Like you got to go through it because people are like. I don't know, they're just the doubters and the haters. And it's, I don't know why people do this. They're like, ah, uh -huh, you might win a bronze. You might win, I don't know about a gold. You know, everybody just underestimates what people, you know, can do. And it's like, who cares? Like, it's their thought, their life. Like, uplift them. Don't bring them down. I mean, if you want to go to the moon, don't tell someone that, hey, you're not going to do it. Say, right on, enjoy the ride. Let's go. What can I do to help? But that's up to the person to surround yes. themselves. It's up to that person to surround themselves it with is. people of like-mindedness. Yes. As I'm, right, as you learn, right? So, and as, when you're in a negative environment, it's you who have to take the responsibility to get out of that and find yourself the positive peer group. So true. That, you know, it, it, and it's, it's, it's hard to do. It is because some people, some of these people you think are friends, and it's very tox toxic energy around me. Like, why? But, you know, and now that I'm, I'm learning all this and I'm constantly learning, I just want to share it. Mm -hmm. So, because my parents never did that. I mean, obviously, they weren't educated enough and they didn't 
kind of like tell me stay away from this, stay away from that. I mean, they, they give me the basics based on what they were brought up with, which wasn't much. Um, so now that's why I want to give back to people. And it's like, no, you know what? Like now I really believe that if somebody wants to do something bad enough, uh, they can do it. Why? There's a lot of great resources around. There's a lot of great people. There's a lot of help. I mean, it's it's amazing. And and there's certain experiences in my life that I share that to, with people. Like people are like, oh yeah, you trained Carrie Underwood. Like I would have never thought, I didn't even know Carrie Underwood was. I, I remember speaking to my wife saying, yeah, I'm going to be training this girl, Carrie Underwood. She's like, yeah, she won uh, American Idol. She's a country star. And I'm like, and I remember that day, it was so funny because, uh, you know, Mike dropped her off at Greco uh, Canada North. And she's like, hi, I'm Carrie. And then I'm like, I didn't know, like, you know what I mean, what kind of exercise to incorporate with her. But she's a hard worker. And then after, um, he's, I, I said, well, who's picking you up? And I guess he was still at the ring. So I ended up driving her uh, to Mike's house. So um, I'm like, listen, I got to be honest with you. Like, I, I know, I don't really know, but I guess, you know, you have some you know, you're a cool country star or whatever and whatnot. Anyways, I think she was impressed. Then I, then I had my friend Charles yes. and uh, who his daughter's a big fan. And I'm like, listen, can you talk on the phone? And she got right on the phone uh, with, with Taylor. And it's like, this is, so eventually I found out obviously who just, she was. Just how big she is. Yeah, yeah. But like who yeah. would have known, right? Yeah. And it's it just, it's things like that in life that people just, you know, don't expect the unexpected that happen. And it's like, wow, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, anything is, uh, is possible, right? Yeah. Anything is possible. You take a title. You then get government funding. Is that how you started the Greco? Like, as you, you were mentioning, it wasn't like you could go to mom and dad and be like, hey, I have this great idea for a business. Can you, can you lend me some cash? This podcast is brought to you by Extension Marketing. They're a new breed of marketing agency that acts as your virtual marketing department, designing and implementing cost-effective marketing strategies that will grow your business. I can speak to this personally, as I've been using the Extension Marketing team to help me launch and grow my business. Founder Pat Whalen has been a lifesaver for me, a genuine coach guiding me along the way into uncharted territory. Tell them you're a friend of the show and receive a free one-hour consultation. Check them out at extensionmarketing.com. Yeah. Uh, how did you How did you get this the studio started? Like that you could start it up and then eventually build it to what it what it is now. Yeah. So. So I, um, I mean, I finished the martial arts mm -hmm. and then the next step was when I got my black belt, I enjoyed it so much. And they said, uh, look, we're expanding, you know, maybe you want to do this for a career. I said, sure. So there was a franchise fee that I had to pay. And I mean, we were like maybe 17, 18. So I was like, okay, well, it was $10,000 that we bought. It was a new venture loan. I mean, my parents, like How I said, old are you? I was like 17. Um, and uh, my parents, I mean, they... They didn't know how to fill out all these papers, right? So my uh, partner, Paulo Fiorin, his mother uh, helped us out. And we're like, man, this is scary. Like, my parents don't even know I'm doing this. Like, I'm going 10 grand. Because their whole mentality was, look, you got to go to school, get your education, be a lawyer, be a doctor, or you're you're you're, you're nobody, right? That's that whole mentality. Yeah, Tony, I cannot see you as a doctor. I know. Really. It's, cra it's, it's But you know what's crazy is that no? uh, it, it, this is yeah. another lesson yeah. that I can tell people yeah. is that when you're young, we always look up to mentors, you know, the soccer coaches, mm -hmm. teachers, parents. And it's like, we think that we owe something because they're like, this is what I thought. And in my head, all going on, I'm like, oh God, I gotta do this. So I'm gonna, my, my parents, my parents. So you, you're really trying to do things for them which isn't really the, the right thing to do because you got to, like my parents still don't even know what I do. Like it's crazy. <laughs> so the, it's like, you got to do it for yourself. Yeah. And, and, and that's why, you know, it took a lot of guts, a lot of willpower because, oh my gosh, if this didn't work yeah, out. I didn't realize you were that young yes. as you're feeling this. I didn't realize that you were really like 17, 18 years yeah. old when you did this. Yeah. And so that, that loan got you which studio? So like, that loan you, got yeah. me the uh, Duvers Martial Arts Studio in okay. Barhaven, the first okay. one on 810 Green Bank Road. Yeah. So what happened was we were rocking it because I'm like, man, because, you know, it like, I was thinking of going to university and, and then all of a sudden I started to make all, all this money, right? And I'm like, this is amazing. So I'm like, I'm living at home. I'm like, this is a dream. And it, you know, and I was always a guy that honestly, I put like the money last. It was more of the passion. So I started teaching. We were in Barhaven. We had uh, about 500 students within two years of being opened up on wow. 810 Green Bank Road. It was amazing. There was only, uh, the population there was probably 10,000 yeah, people. It was That's it. Yeah. 
So, um, and you know, it's it, to this day, it, you know, again, talk about the reward. I see these students that are like 20, 25, that were six years old. It's like, man, it's, it's amazing. So what happened was uh, then when I, when I won, when I won my gold medal, um, I kept going, kept going. And then I just, I wanted to do it on my own. It was just an inner pride thing. So I said, look, I'm going to leave the franchise. I've learned a lot, but I now I want to go on their Greco martial arts, uh, because you're always learning. Yeah. And, um, so I changed a few things around. I did that. And then what happened was fitness was my my true passion. Like I, I think I found like, you know, when you when it's time when you get put into the yeah. your back end. So I was like, what do you really want? It's kind of the same story, like what you've been going through. Yeah. So it's like, you know what, this is what I want and, and I want fitness. So then I uh, approached a really good uh, friend. I said, look, uh, how do I get certified? Like, what do I do? Like, uh, well, you know, I mean, I'm running a business here. I, I don't really have time to go back to university. Like, what do I do? So they said, uh, you have to contact uh, this company, Sports Performance Institute. And I'm like, okay. So I research it. And uh, this guy by the name of Ed McNeely, um, he wrote a few books. He does a lot of programs for Peak, um, teaches uh, kinetics, uh, uh, human kinetics, and bright guys. So him and Lloyd Armstrong, we I actually personally hired them. And because uh, I said, look, I can't have a business. I can't go back to university and spend like a year. Like I- I'm stuck here now. Anyway, so um, they came every day, six hours. We did a lot of theory, and then we did a lot of the practical stuff. I said, use me as a guinea pig, you know, because I wanted to train Olympic athletes. So um, it was honestly one of the, the best things I ever did. I, sp- I spent good money on it, but it was worth every penny because it's like one-on-one with an instructor. Yeah. Going through like every, I mean, so many textbooks, and I mean, it, it was tough. And the exam was really tough too. Like and now I know that a lot of people... You know, there's certain personal training certifications that people could do online, but then there's ones that like you really have to work at it. So, I mean, it's your choice on what you want to do. But I can tell you that, I mean, understanding the science, doing the practical stuff, because see, not every people, not everybody that is is a that learns well can deliver it well. You know, so everybody that gets good grades doesn't mess, doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be right. good teachers. Right. So that's why I love the practical stuff. I said, use me as a guinea pig because there was so much information to absorb. And then what happened was I said to my uh, partner, I said, I want to start a fitness school. So what I did is I started cardio kickboxing. There was another division back when like Thai bowl wasn't even out yet. Yeah. Okay. I, I remember this. Do you remember this? Yeah. And then I actually <laughs> remember being part of the Thai bow. Yes. Phase. Oh my God. Yeah. I totally and, remember that. And, and then yeah. and then this is another experience. Yeah. So then what I did is I, I had a, a gig in... Um, uh, Florida. So Tony Little, the guy with the ponytail, yeah, he did all those infomercials. Yeah. He's like, uh, uh, their agency's like, yeah, you know, he wants you as part of their infomercial. I'm like, okay, whatever. Hop on a plane, go down. I get this agreement. I bring it to my lawyer. My lawyer's like, yeah, like this isn't worth it for you. Like this guy, you're going to be like his, basically his gopher, right? And um, so I got the experience to meet him and meet people in Florida. And I said, wow, what a great idea. So what he wanted to do is he wanted to use me like, hey, here's Tony from uh, Canada, world champion on a gazelle. And and that's fine. That's cool. So then I met uh, Linda Chainley, who was um, running uh, QVC, the home shopping network in the States. And, I, you know, back then VHS were very popular. <laughs> so so I, I came back. I'm like, I'm going to do this. Do this thing. Videos. Yeah, I'm going to do this video. So I started karate size. And um <laughs> I uh, yes because I totally forgot yeah, about all this. About that. I totally forgot about all this. I yeah. Know. So so this was this was another experience I could tell people. So I hired this marketer and, and he's oh like God, uh, yeah. I didn't know about business plans yeah. and all that stuff. I'm like look, I, I this is going to be hot and it's cardio kickboxing. So um I you know, I got a few models in in there and uh you know, my niece Rosa was one of them. Elaine who has her own studio right now. Uh, Guy who's still operating as a fitness guy. They're all in the They're video. They're all in the video. Oh <laughs> so, god. So I I talked to this marketer and he's like, "No, it's not going to work. It, it's uh you're not going to make any money." So what I did is I went ahead and did it. I don't care about the money. I just want you know, I want to get this done. So Blockbusters was right next door to us. Remember Blockbusters? Yeah. <laughs> so we sold 2,200 copies at 1995. So it was great, but guess what? It resulted in a location. So then I went into the Bar Haven uh, 3023 Cedar View Road, which is now, you know, the location for Greco. And then next to that, I put the cardio kickbox. And I had 250 women doing cardio kickboxing. I hired a DJ a Friday night doing a class. It was, like it was just, it was a fun fit yeah. way, you know? And then what happened was um, 
I started to kind of learn more about fitness and how it was all about nutrition and it wasn't just being fit. So the thing that kind of threw me off was that mostly the majority were women is like they didn't understand it and I didn't either that it was a lifestyle. So they would come in. Some of the kids would go to have a Slurpee at the Max yeah. Milk. Some of them would have a, a cigarette and like a Coca. I'm like, okay, this is not going to work. Right, and I, and I think that's where the shift was, that's right? You could, you, you could work out as many hours a day as you wanted to, but as soon as you're leaving that and going to get the Slurpee or doing that with the family, it's, it's just, it's not going to work. And that, I think, started the nutrition side of things. And I do remember, um, I, I can't remember how long, I think it was before I had kids, because yeah. it was a while ago, because you were still, you hadn't expanded into all these all the other locations yet and I remember sitting with you and you kind of breaking down how we were eating as to the furnace oh yes am I allowed to bring in okay yeah. so your body is a furnace yeah. right and so and it was really about having a constant Burn. burning fire and that you constantly needed to put fresh wood and fresh things Man, to keep the good memory to <laughs> keep the fire at a steady temperature because at that temperature at that rate it was burning it was burning fat it was everything was working as soon as the fire got too low yeah. then you had to then you had to work extra hard to be able to like i i totally remember that that furnace your furnace analogy stayed with me for so long that's awesome and i would kind of when i would feel myself going down and be like oh my god i forgot to fill the furnace it's it's losing its you know is the fire's losing its power but it stuck you know and it, it changed our perception as how we were looking at food or how we were you know eating yeah uh and so i think you did that for a lot of people like there were plans in place that's right for people to follow i think what people have the hardest time doing and i know this was part of it and i failed drastically and it's hard when i talk to people about it and when people say journal you what you eat get a food journal like that is like the worst thing you could possibly say to people because they hate doing it. They do. They hate doing it. But the reality is once you see actually all the stuff that you put on there, you start to realize why you're having issues. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody I see, it's like, well, I eat pretty good. I eat I eat good. I eat. The, oh, really? Okay. Well, if you start writing it down, you don't because it's, it's, it's so... Um, but because you have to add the sauces, yeah, the and sauces. Then you have to, is, yeah. And then, oh. okay, well, what did you have with the burger? Okay, well, I had this and this exactly. and the mayo and the, so when you really started to look at it, it's like, oh my God, but, but people have such a hard time doing that. And I'm sure you still find that with people. It's, you know what? I still find that with people. People still go on like all these fad diets. People try new things. Right now, the, the thing I like about this industry that is, uh, there's been a major shift in is that uh, women in general, they know now that yeah. strength training is not going to make them huge. Like there was so misconception in the past. Oh, I can't oh, lift heavy weights. Yeah, I'm going to get all bulky. Yeah, I'm going to get all bulky. Yeah, I'm going to look bulky. like a, a muscle. A muscle exactly. Yeah. The other thing too, it's like, oh, you don't have to have your washboard abs because it's like it's not about that. It, it's about looking strong. It's about looking fit. Uh, we've been doing this in the Greco um, method classes. It's amazing. I, I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you this um, analysis that we did. Okay. It's gonna. It's gonna blow you away. Okay. And then. And then. And then the other thing was that you have to eat to burn, right? Because people don't eat. So here's the shift we did with Greco. So people are coming in, and um, they're like, uh, "Yeah, well, I want to get toned. Oh, I want to lose uh, fat. Uh, you know what? I don't want to get big. Okay, no problem." So then it's always kind of the same kind of issues that people have. So then what we did is we know that 80% is really what you eat. So then what we did is we constructed the Greco method now. So what we did is, remember before we had the original Lean and Fit Prone, which yeah. is like eight different stations and, and you just kind of keep moving in okay. a circuit. So for people who aren't familiar, yeah. and there's going to be a lot, I mean, people yeah. here in the city know, but the Lean and Fit program was uh, group exercises, circuit training, and then it also had the nutritional component or the That's right. kind of the, the diaries and everything that went with it. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. So that was kind of like the standard circuit training that now everybody's into yeah. circuit. I mean, we were doing this 22 20 years, years ago. ago. Yeah. So now what we did is, because people's intentions is I want to look strong, I want to be fit, and I want to prevent injury, well, this is what we got to do. We put this whole formula together. So what we did is we created a strong class because people are into CrossFit. But CrossFit is a sport, right? So you could get injured with, with those kind of sports like any other sport. So we put a strong class. What that is is at the beginning of the week, most people start their week on a Monday. You want to get this high volume repetitions, 45% of your one rep max. You're doing you know, an upper body pull, an upper body push, meaning that you're working your push muscles and your back muscles where people, again, back in the day, it was this, this, you know, this, all push what about your back it's just because you don't look at it but you're going to end up looking like this as opposed to looking like this so people are getting it now right working more of the back muscles the core so the strength and the strong program is you do uh 
10 to 12 repetitions. It's not a rah, rah, rah class. You just get your reps in. Instructor comes around, looks at your form. You do upper body uh, push, pull, lower body pull, pull, push. Then um, 12 minutes into the workout, the instructor will blow the whistle and it's about 30 seconds of quick cardiovascular exercise. Then you're back and you continue on. That's your strong. So that puts a lot of stress on the, on the muscle. When that happens, the muscle rebuilds. Then you feed the muscle, gets stronger, burns calories, gets you more lean, burns more fat. The next class after that would be a lean and fit class where now it's more functional uh, uh, strength with a little bit of an endurance component, some core work. Uh, Then the next class after that, which would be like midweek now would be a hardcore class. Well, what's that? Now you're really revving up your system. So you do like a minute and 15 seconds of high interval training. Then in between each round, you do a active recovery a calisthenic workout. So let's say like you're doing skater lunges in between and then a max heart rate where you're like sprinting on the spot for 10 seconds and you go to the next station. Right now, Tony, you have scared off. I know. So many people, right? Like so many people are like, (laughs) I'm out. Yeah. Yeah, right? So, you know what? Because you're you're talking like a, a skater lunge and then a, a 100% max out run, yeah. right? And then it, and and you you had people and then it's like, whoa, <laughs> okay, these using words that are kind of freaking me out right yeah. now. Do you find that people kind of come in with that mentality, like, okay, hey, what you've just said, I'm scared, I'm scared shitless to have yeah. to do, um, but then they realize it's it's a lot simpler when you're actually in it and doing it, and that your body actually figures it out a lot quicker. Yeah. It, 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 totally. And that's that's that mind shift because see, always people have that fear or that I can't attitude or it's not for me. I have to be an athlete. No, because you don't have to train at that level. You build yourself up. And then what we did is we showed people results. We we purchased this evil machine, 360 evil machine. It's Australian research. It's like you stand on it and it gives you a 360 uh, scan of your whole entire body. The neat thing that it did uh, again, I'm going to use women because they're mostly uh, the dominant clients of mm-hmm. our of our business. Is uh, you get those skinny mini uh, women that are good from far, far from good because they're like, well, what do you mean? I got varicose fat. Uh, yeah, sweetheart. Like, like they're the skinny fat. Like, am I allowed to say that the skinny yeah, fat? Right. Skinny like, fat. like they're they're thin, but they're soft. Yes. Right? Like they're exactly yes, okay. Exactly, because on that whole skeletal yeah. system, if I put that blanket on, it's never going to look wide. Yeah. Because their bone structure is like this. Yeah. But if tiny. their bone structure is like this, now they're going to look wider. It doesn't mean they're fat. So yeah, you might look great in a bikini, but you're really good from far, far from good. Because if I come, I can pinch your skin. You know, high right. weight, right? And then you can have women who may look heavier, but who are actually in great shape. They're yes. just th- thicker boned, but have a great muscle structure, you know, and you really can't pinch yeah. a lot on them. Yeah. Right? And, and and that's that's why people now are more engaged and they, they've even made that mind shift. Like, you know, like I, I now you can look at someone and go, oh, wow, they're, they're strong. They're yeah. fit. That's the new kind of cool hip thing now. Right. It's not like, it's almost fit, like being is skinny new, is strong almost is, odd. Strong is the new, I, there's a saying right now. Something I, like I, that. I, yeah, I can't figure it out. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I have done classes and I think because of my background, I think I'm, I'm, I'm educated enough. You look great, by the way. Like, you look amazing. This is is like the best I've seen you. Like, you always look great, but this is like the best I've seen you. Okay, with that being said, we can go back to what you mentioned, I think, five minutes into our podcast when we talked about the cortisol levels. Yeah. I was always working out. I ate pretty well. And I knew that I had one factor that was prohibiting me from looking the way I wanted to because I couldn't get it. And that was sleep. And I knew it. You know, and and this wasn't about me looking good, right? I just, but I knew that layer that I was carrying around was the cortisol of the lack of sleep. I was going, surviving on five hours for 10 years and keeping up my pace of life. So when you mentioned the cortisol, I'm like, I'm like the prime example yeah. of that. And I just, everything just feels, my workouts are stronger. Everything's happening just because I'm, I'm better rested. You're better rested? Like, You're yeah, happier yeah. now? Yeah, like it's just, it's a different, it's a different mentality. You're going. Yeah, but what I was saying, thank you. But what I was, what I was saying is, I, I have noticed, and this is one I, you know, I hope you don't mind me asking, no. but you can have a number of different people in your classes um, that are at very different levels. So, you know, like you can have the woman that's coming in who's looking, hasn't been to the gym since in three years since she had her kids and this is her first workouts back um, and is looking to shed, you know, 20, 30 pounds. And then you have the businessman who is kind of trying to get in a quick thing in between his lunch. Like, how do you take these classes um, and be able to personalize it a little bit when you have so many different levels and different people with different needs? 
yep. in those classes. Okay. Is, so, is that fair to yeah, ask? Yeah, because, because I do think that the, the mom has a very different need than the businessman, you know, over the other athletes that you're working how do you how do you cater it to them in these classes? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the business uh, answer, yeah. and then I'm gonna give you the answer that you could do out there, right? So the business answer for our business, the way we do it is we have this e volt scan. So now what we do is we get everybody on the machine, and we tell them that their body fat uh, is inhibiting them to get the results. So in other words, if a guy wants to look like super strong and he's got like 30 pounds of body fat, well, guess what? We're gonna get him to do class A, B, and C. We're going to do an assessment. We're going to slowly build them up so he starts to do, um, you know, those classes. Then we recommend him that, you know, he actually sees a nutritionist or a doctor that will calculate his macros and he knows exactly what to eat, when to eat, how to eat. We can dab into that, but I mean, the problem is that not everybody at the studios are qualified to give that advice, mm -hmm. but everybody can say, yeah, I eat a piece of chicken with a salad or, you know, give you some good advice or this is what I eat. And then you kind of follow that, but you get proper advice with that. Then what we do is we get you back on the evil. The other thing the evil machine does is it gives you your biological keep age. You're saying evil. Evolt. Evolt. Yeah, E V O L T. Okay. Evolt 360. Do people think of it as an evil? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. The evil so, 360. Yeah, I mean, I, I, so far so good. <laughs> okay. They like they like the printout okay. because you know it's measurable. Everything it. goes to their phone, and and it's what's really neat about that is that uh, it gives you your biological age. So like, let's say you're 40, mm -hmm. but you're in a 20 year old body you'll actually it'll tell you it gives you a score of 100 so it's really Ooh, really i want to go on this machine. yeah you got to do oh, it I try we this. have one at yeah. our uh, uh beach street location you yeah. definitely got to go on it okay. it's actually amazing and you could research it online evolt 360 okay um so then what we do is we cater those classes we monitor them for three weeks we get them back on the machine they start to see changes like that uh that's the way we we cater it now because I work in a clinic once a week with uh, Dr. Joel, Revive Life, I've got the opportunity to really expand my horizons and see really what's out there. So what's really neat out there, and I did it this year with one of my hockey players, is that you could do uh, DNA testing, which measures you know, your genetics. So for instance, for the guy that wants to look strong, but has this endurance gene, well, yeah, we could further his strength base, but he's gonna be that person that's gonna look more like a, a sprinter, or a marathon runner because of his genetic uh, background. And it's like, wow, this is pretty neat. So here's an example. So this year, um, I had uh, Ben Hutton. He plays for Vancouver Canucks. He's a defenseman. And I said, you know what? You got to go through this. I think you'll like it uh, because it is pricey, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's your health. So they did all the tests and it's like, yeah, this guy definitely has an endurance gene. So I could see that, you know, when you first come in, if you look at the my Instagram, he's kind of like a, a chubby kind of like, you know, big bone kid, but he got very lean, very quick. Uh, his endurance was like through the roof. And then... I brought Seiku Kaba one day to do a workout because he's an Olympian. And he's like, he's man, an Olympic the, hurdler. Yeah, yeah, he goes, yeah. man, this guy's got wheels. Because when we were going outside to do the sprints at the end, you could see his stride. And he got lean, he's tall. But how did you do that? So what did the endurance gene mean? That you had to train and, him more uh, on a, on a, his workouts had to be longer. Exactly. Like, they have to be longer, lighter weights and longer duration because he's got that that gene. It's like, I mean, Usain Bolt can teach me how to run. I'm going to be fast, but I'm never going to be a sprinter because my I'm just more of a mesomorph, shorter, compact, where I might have maybe the gene to be more of an Olympic lifter. And, and, right. and you know, so it all depends. So what it is is peace of mind. You could work towards... Uh, what you're genetically kind of balanced and a doctor will read you uh, your whole your genetic profile and then what that information does is it gets transferred to the trainer so imagine you were my trainer and I was your client and I came and I brought you this and then you call the doctor it's like listen you know what Leanne uh, Tony's more of a mesomorph he's got the uh, strength gene as opposed to the endurance gene so any any strength based exercise he's going to bulk up very quickly so if he doesn't want to bulk up I recommend that you don't do a lot of this that you do more of endurance because this is what's going to happen with his genetic profile so it's really neat because your job as a trainer you want to get the best for your client so all of a sudden you start to think and you go wow okay now i could do this workout and you could you could tell well, the and, person and will you tailor it to those people yes like that's what i'm saying when you're in a group setting it's hard to tailor it but when you know that the person standing over there has a different genetic break, yeah breakup that you're able to 
to kind of cater it to them. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned that you have these hockey players in there and you train a ton of hockey players in the off season. Are you able to tell based on how they train, based on their, based on, I want to say their heart, yeah. when they walk in for their summer off season training that you know which player is going to go back and have a better year than the other? Totally. Yeah. Totally. It's, you know, it's funny. We actually have a group meetings with instructors because, you know, one thing is uh, attitude, you know, it definitely distinguishes their altitude. People, uh, I look for little things. I hope they're not listening, but I'm well, sure I they're going to say I hope they are say, listening. Oh, yeah. Well, well yeah. you know what? Because little things could... like, uh, we're only going to do three sets, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So automatically it's like, you know what? Don't ask that question. Uh, you're and an that, athlete. Okay. Suck let me say up. this, but should this apply? Let's, let's do this. So it applies to not just the professional hockey players, but to everyone. When you're going in for your training session and you're making an investment to have a trainer with you and put you through this workout, don't ask them. No. Don't ask them. It's just three sets, right? Exactly. Like, what do you want them asking you? Like, what do you want their language to be? Well, their their language should be, you know what? Uh, I want more. Give me more. Give me more. Uh, it, because the thing is, it's like, and, um, and, and sharing the results, you know, stuff like this. I was on the ice. I felt great today. Uh, my takeoff was amazing. Because, see, trainers put so much heart and soul. Like, these workouts that we put together, this year what we did is uh, we did tri-phase training. It was really neat because I actually went through it myself uh, uh, and became a guinea pig, and I love it. So, because, you know, you want to preach what you're feeling. So um, Ben Peterson, who's the uh, fitness director of the Philadelphia Flyers, because one of my clients is Claude Giroux, a bright guy, PhD, I wrote a book, uh, Triface Training, and I, I know a lot of people that are listening can probably go online, you can research it, it's all over the place. Uh, and Kyle Dees, who's the strength and conditioning uh, coach for Minnesota University. What's really neat about it is th- they their whole philosophy, this is catered towards athletes, is um, you do these blocks of training. So for instance, uh, the first block would be like an eccentric uh, movement. So let's say you're doing a squat, you would go down two seconds, two seconds again, two seconds again. So it's slow, 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 then up. Mm -hmm. So you do that block because you're fighting a force on the muscle. It's like, you're pushing me, you're pushing me, pushing me, I'm pushing back. Yeah. Then uh, the next four uh, weeks of the blocks is now you're doing a nice symmetric hold. So, so you're going down fast and then coming up slow. You're, you're holding it slow down and coming and up co- fast. Okay. So now it's like you're against the wall, boom, and I come fast. So that force, those two forces uh, are very similar to a game. It's like quick takeoff, glide, quick takeoff, glide. Then the last phase is the concentric phase where now you're doing your regular squats up and down. And you'll see that when you're doing this, and it does, it can be any weight. So you don't have to be an athlete to train like this. But what happens is your strength goes way, way, way up. I never used to like squat. Like I'm squatting like 315, like repping 10 reps, like nothing. I'm like, okay, I never did this stuff. I did dumbbells. Like, you know, so it's just, it's amazing how you expand your horizons. You apply a lot of good exercises. And that way, these athletes get the best out of it. Uh, how often should people... I'm a, I'm a big thing. I see people in the gym. First of all, they wander around. And they have no they have no purpose when they walk in. <laughs> they walk around and it's then so they kind of... <laughs> like, uh, like, I have like, know what you're doing before you walk in. Because you're wasting time. I, I'm like, you, you, you've, it's you've made the effort to get here. Make the most of it. But you see the people um, walking around. And then I see people doing the same workouts all the time and I'm and I and I want to be able to say hey I've seen you here for the last couple months and I've seen you do the exact same workout your muscles already know what you're about to do and they're just going okay we got you we know what we're about to do how often do you recommend people changing up their workouts like how often do you need to kind of trigger those muscles well I I would my prerogative is I love what you do you see like I'll tell you like big box gyms not to to you know Mm. throw them under a bus because at least it gets most people to go in there and get healthy but the problem is is that too many people are like robots they go in and they do okay shoulder press and it's like an overabundance use of this and leg press and this and this and then all of a sudden these muscles like you know you can't burn them off anymore that you're going to cause an injury so what you do about combining these circuits and you, and you post them on your Instagram, like that's what a lot of people adapt to because like, wow, that's amazing. One day you're doing a uh, leg on a Bosu ball with a med ball. The next day you're doing, you're, you're giving oh, your so you body. Like my, you like my workouts? I love it. They're awesome. Like every girl should do those because <laughs> what, what you want to do is you want to do that stuff because you don't, you know, walk around like a robot, turn left, turn right, you lean, you grab, I grab my water, like you're, you're moving all the time. So when you're combining that, in different variations of movements, you're becoming stronger, more balanced, balance, more core control, as opposed to this robotic movements. Mm-hmm. Like you're the machine, you know. You don't. You become the machine. Yeah. You don't use the machine. 
And I, I, I think maybe maybe it's because I'm getting older or my mind shift is changing. But me going into the gym now, while I would like to look good and fit and, and kind of feel good, I am now looking ahead towards aging preventative health awesome uh preventative injuries and having that balance like having that ability to know like 20 years down the road i can slip fall and and catch myself right or or be strong enough to kind of you know i sometimes like when i'm lifting really heavy things i have to play games with myself i'm like okay pretend that somebody's in a lot of trouble and i need to lift this dead weight you know like i play stupid tricks on my head it's amazing but like i have to switch it like as i'm pushing like you know sometimes you do those the 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 sleds yeah yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, imagine imagine my child was in desperate, like I had to pull them out of something, you know? That's and amazing. that's sometimes how I think about things. But it's not just about doing a rep or an exercise. It's life circumstances. Yeah. And you know, know what? That's, that's probably a really morbid no, thing. No, that's think, amazing. But, that's yeah. epic genetics. Like yeah. 70% is controlled by your emotions. In the book, there's a chapter called You Rest, You Rust. And it's exactly about that. Most people, they, they go in their 40s, 50s, like, oh, I used to do that in high school. I'm yeah. too far gone. Well, then if you keep putting those thoughts, those emotions, uh, oh, you know, I don't even know why I'm going to the gym. Or my doctor yeah. told me, but you just sort of, boom, you're decaying. Your, your brain is into decay mode. When you go in, what you just said, I'm in survival mode. I got to push my kid. I got to pretend I got to, yeah. but you're like, your energy is yeah. through the roof. So guess what happens? Your mind shifts. You're actually going upwards. And, and that's why you see a lot of people at a certain age be in better shape than other people at a certain age. I, I went into a, an old age home and I asked a few uh, seniors, you know, what, Can you change knowing, obviously, you know, where you are in your life today? They said, my strength. People don't want to be with a king. People don't want to be with a walker. I mean, you want to age gracefully, but the more base, dense muscle you can have around your joints uh, as you age gracefully, the more stability, the less chance you have of injuring yourself. Right. But there could be someone who's 80 right now listening to this, Mm -hmm. and I can say to them, it's okay. Just walk into the gym and pick up a two-pound weight right now and start. Yeah. Like it is never, never, never too late. late. And do you, do you like seeing that? That I love you're it. still now getting an older generation coming in who maybe have not exercised their lives or who haven't done it in 30 years coming back in. Love it. I love it. I posted, I was at Carlton Place. Um, it was their one year anniversary and I taught class. There was this uh, lady, she was almost like 80 years old and um it was like, oh my gosh, you're here. And she's like, yeah, I'm here still. I'm like, and getting her own pace. And I love that. I love that because it's not so much the the weights. It's just what's going through their mind to be able to say, I'm doing this and I'm in a class with an athlete. I'm in a class with, you know, people that are severely fit, but I'm still doing it. So it's never too late. You know, go in the pool, uh, take brisk walks. Uh, I had one guy that, um, again, heavy stress guy and doesn't have time to do anything. I said, look, you have a dog. You love your dog. Do me one favor. Get up in the morning a half an hour earlier. Put your headphones on. Put some new age music and take your dog for a walk. He's like, I'll take your advice. He starts going, taking his dog for a walk. He goes, you know what? I start, I feel good. I'm, I'm, I'm more alert at my work. Like I, I started to like it. See, if you don't, you know, take a few steps to get the feel and see the progress, it's tough to create interest, especially when you know you can. How long do you want to give someone before they start to, like people want immediate gratification, but when do you really start to see uh, the mind shift or the, the wheel spinning, that it, the domino effect that it's working? Usually three weeks, you know, because it, it takes three weeks to, to break a lot of different habits. And uh, I mean, you know, you get you get like even like people making choices on nutrition uh, when you go away, you don't eat the greatest. And it's amazing how you crave, you know, that food that you had. It's like you think about it. But if you haven't had, you know, the hard work that went along to go through those experiences, it's tough to motivate you to to say no. Because a lot of people say, how do you say no? Like, how do you stay motivated? What makes you keep going? You know, and it's like, look, I constantly keep seeing these images in my head because, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in the industry of, to, to obviously, you know, learn and teach fitness. But, I mean, it's hard for me to keep going too. So I got to keep those positive images on a regular basis. First thing in the morning, I take the time for me, myself. Take a big deep breath, relax. What is it that you want to do right now? Okay, workout has to be in no matter what. When is it? Well, even if it's at seven, at six, like those are, if, if you want to call them sacrifices, but it makes me feel good. And, and it gives me the energy to share with people. So Okay, let's share with people because we have a couple minutes left to okay. go. Uh, let's share with people your top three uh, training tips that you that to see results, and then your top three nutrition 
tips. Tips. Yeah. Okay. So top three, number one, nutrition, uh, drink a lot of water, hydration, very key because uh, people mix being thirsty with being hungry. So you need to drink a lot of water. Uh, number two is you need to eat uh, five times a day. Look, five small meals, just count your fingers, count your hand. Uh, the portion of the palm of your hand is going to be your lean sources of protein. It could be from a plant base or it could be from a source of meat, chicken, lean uh, fish, whatever you, whatever you like. And then two tight fists would be the portion of greens. Uh, greens coming like from your green beans, your broccoli, your kales. Can you fill up with salad? And that could be a substitute as the green vegetables. Sure, fine. So you do that. So right now you're going, I can't do that because it's impossible. Every three hours, I got to have that. Well, then you could substitute and you could substitute with either a smoothie or you could substitute in your mid-morning snacks with an apple, uh, some celery sticks, some green beans raw. Um, and so you're, it's your, we eat raw. Yeah you're, yeah. you're grazing all day. You need to, you're an animal. Like you need to graze all day. And you look at a, a moose, a bison, a deer. It's like their body fat's like 6%. They're grazing all day long. It's just what you eat. So by your desk, have your water, have your greens, have your, uh, you know, your, uh, sources of protein that can come from even like sources of nuts, like almonds and peanuts, uh, pistachio, not a lot because there's a lot of fat in there too, but it's a good fat. Mm -hmm. So it's going to help you stay satisfied throughout the day. Then when you now have a moment where you can actually enjoy lunch, make better choices. And then when you have dinner, you, you just plan it. It's really easy to plan. So that's the nutritional stuff is five times a day, hydrate and eat less more often, the Elmo theory, which is actually in the book too. Do you believe in any of the uh, keto diets or the Atkins or the, like, I mean, there's so many that are out so there. Or, or for you, is it really what you've just said is the base for you? Like, yeah, I just, the way I look at it is, is that those things going to work? Yes, I know a lot of people that mm -hmm. have done it. Does it put sacrifice on your body? Yes, because the thing is, Again, using the analogy of the furnace or the car, if you eat a balance of nutrients, like food is fuel. That's what people don't understand. It's like it's fuel. So what fuel do you need? If, well, if my car needs $80 to get to Toronto, I got to put $80 of gas because I'm stopping at four different gas stations by the time we get to Toronto. Well, we work on a 24-hour clock. We need fuel. And that's why most people that are on their, those diets are sluggish. They're tired. It's because, honey... Dude, you need fuel. So why don't you do this? Eat right and go and exercise. It's not rocket science. And away you go. You know, and if you need to do more, then do more because you're taking in more. And so, I mean, it's it's just so easy. If people just want the quick fix. <laughs> they want the magic pill, Tony. They want the I magic pill. I know. I know. Okay. Nice. Okay. And then give me your three tips uh, for workouts. Like, so a, a beginner, like what mindset, where do you want them to think so that they'll find success? Okay. So find a balance, a start off with what you like to do. If it's uh, walking, then walk. If it's a pool work, go into the water. If it's a stretching, do the stretching. But incorporate weights. Uh, Weight-bearing resistance exercise is very important because they make your muscles grow. Not grow like a bodybuilder, just grow. And that way it becomes more dense. You become more mobile. You have more stability. You have less chance of injuring yourself as you get older. Plus, you're going to burn a lot of calories. And make sure that you're training at least three times a week. That's pretty much it. It's pretty simple balance. See, it's it's all it's not every it's, day. It's, it's all simple. Like we just <laughs> wrapped it all up for you. It's it's all there. All the information that you need. Uh, strong mind, lean body strategies for life successes. When uh, best thing is like there's a website for it. Yeah, go and order can, it you, online. You can yeah. go to strongmindleanbody.com and you can order it there. Yeah, and it'll be at your door in like two three days. People okay. have been doing that. Um, we're gonna have a book launch in October, uh, October 22nd, and in New York, October 8th. So I'm really looking forward to meeting people and just sharing the progress with others, like kind of what we're doing yeah. here. Yeah, pretty cool. It was great yeah. to see you. It's it was nice great to, to see yeah, you. Yeah, I totally forgot about karate size. <laughs> I totally forgot about like, I still have that VHS like, tape. I have like mem <laughs> memory flashbacks at this point. Uh, Tony, it was great. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Tony, you're gonna share this. I know, because you've got your social media platform. He's gonna share the podcast. I'd love for you to be able to share the podcast, let people know, tell your friends about it i was telling you before we started it's been fun to see like in my analytics it's like crossing oceans and getting to different places so i want to say thank you to all uh, to everyone who's listening please go subscribe like leave some comments i would love to hear some feedback uh, and if there's guests that you're looking to have or topics i would really appreciate hearing from you as well you can always find more information as well on my website leannelang.com that's it episode 33 of living your life with leanne lang thanks for joining us and see you back here next week that was awesome that was so good, Lee. That was really good.
That was, man, that flew. 